you have less frontal development than I should have expected. It's a dangerous habit to finger loaded firearms in the pocket of one's dressing gown. You evidently don't know me. On the contrary, I think it's fairly evident that I do. I can spare you five minutes, if you have anything to say. All that I have to say has already crossed your mind. And possibly my answer has already crossed yours. You stand fast. Absolutely. frustrated me in the affair of the French gold. Ah. Oh. So it was you behind the red-headed Lee. A very ingenious and well-contrived idea. High praise from you. You crossed my path first on the 4th of January. By the middle of February, I was seriously inconvenienced by you. And at the end of March, I was absolutely hampered in my plan. And now, with this last business in France, you have placed me in such a position by your continual persecution that I am in positive danger of losing my liberty. The situation is becoming an impossible one. Have you any suggestion to make? You must drop it, Mr. Holmes. You really must, you know. And what if I refuse? I'm quite sure that a man of your intelligence will see that there can be but one outcome to this affair. It is necessary that you should withdraw. You have worked things in such a fashion that we have only one resource left. It has been an intellectual treat to me to see the way in which you grappled with this matter. But I say unaffectedly, that it would be a grief to me to be forced to take an extreme measure. <laughs> oh, you smile, sir. But it really would, I do assure you. Dangerous part of my trade. This is not danger. It is inevitable destruction. You stand in the way not merely of an individual, but of a mighty organization, the full extent of which even you, with all your cleverness, have been unable to realize. You must stand clear, Mr. Holmes, or be trodden underfoot. You know, I'm afraid that in the pleasure of this conversation, I am neglecting business of importance, which awaits me elsewhere. Well, well. It seems a pity. But I've done what I could. This is a duel between you and me, Mr. Holmes. You hope to place me in the dock. You hope to beat me. If you are clever enough to bring destruction on me, rest assured, I shall do as much for you. You have paid me several compliments, Mr. Moriarty. Let me pay you one in return when I say that if I were assured of the former eventuality, I would, in the interests of the public, cheerfully accept the latter. I can promise you the one, but not the other! <laughs> 